Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Wednesday, October 8, 2014. This is Texan TV News from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, and I am Michaela Bram. Today's top story in campus news, the emergency phones around campus have been removed. These were always identified with a blue light. The annual cost to maintain the phones was $20,000. The phones never connected to emergency services which made them incapable of being true emergency phones. In local news, according to the Empire Tribune, the Stephenville City Council had their monthly meeting Tuesday evening. The council changed the amendment to the current ordinance would allow a taxi service to be established in Stephenville while preventing City Council from regulating fares that would be charged. In August, a plan was presented for a startup of the taxi service and the fare proposed was $5 base fee and 25 cents per mile after that. Other things on the agenda include planning and zoning issues, approval of a contract, and several purchases to be made by the city, including police vehicles. There will be an executive session to discuss legal matters involving the city after the regular meeting. This session will be closed to the public. And now today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. In Texas news, Edward Graff, a Central Texas man convicted, was granted a new trial in the murder of, of a case stemming from the death of his two stepsons. The boys died in a fire in 1986 in the city of Hewitt. Opening statements were held on Tuesday in Waco. Graff was charged with four counts of injury to a child and two counts each of murder and capital murder. The boys were eight and nine years old at the time of death. Graff had spent more than 25 years in prison before questioning questions regarding a testimony used to convict him caused the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals to overturn his conviction. There were also faults found in the fire and guest investigation linked with Graff's case. According to the prosecutor on the case, Michael Jarrett, these deaths are a story of greed, lies, and arrogance. Defense attorneys have not yet spoken. In national news, school officials at a New Jersey high school have canceled the football season over allegations of bullying, intimidation, and harassment among players. The school officials made the announcement Monday night in Sayreville, New Jersey. According to the district superintendent Labe, there was credible evidence to back up the allegation that the bullying, intimidation, and harassment took place on a wide level. Labe said he could not discuss the investigation and the prosecutor's office also declined to release any details. Sayreville is located next to the Raritan River and was the site of devastating flooding from the Hurricane Sandy in October 2012. Football was a constant through the storm's aftermath and the school has had sectional titles. The news hit students and several students expressed disappointment and anger at Labe's decision. Labe said he wanted to send a message to students and student athletes, the nation with his decision. He said the one true way to stop bullying is for those bystanders to do the right thing and the upstanders and report to an adult or someone in authority of what is going on. In international news, a Spanish woman in Madrid is now under close watch after she has become infected with Ebola. The government has made a decision to put down her dog because the animal might possibly transmit the disease to humans. The Spanish nursing student happens to be the first case of Ebola outside of West Africa. She was caring for a Spanish priest who had died last month in Liberia from the virus as well. Her husband is also being quarantined to avoid any possible spreading of the Ebola virus. There is no known cure for the virus, but they are using experimental drugs on the patients that are infected. There are new precautions that will be put in effect shortly to help prevent the virus from spreading across borders. In sports, the International Association of Athletics Federation, or IAAF, has confirmed that three cities in the United States, Spain, and Qatar, the IAAF says Tuesday it has received formal applications from Eugene, Oregon, Barcelona, and Doha. The city sent letters of intent earlier this year. Eugene is bidding to bring track and field showcase events to the United States for the first time. The host city will be selected at the IAAF Council meeting in Monaco on November 18th. An IAAF evaluation panel headed by Sebastian Coe will visit the three cities this month. The World Championships are held every two years. Beijing will host the event in 2015 and London in 2017. And now for the weather. According to the Weather Channel, today's high is 91 with a low of 68. The winds will be out of the south at 10 to 20 miles an hour. Unfortunately, there is no chance of rain. Tomorrow, the high will be 89 with a low of 69. Today's broadcast was produced by Andy Barton, Sarah Sanderson, and Shayla Watson. 
Make sure to watch us on Northland Cable Channel every weekday at 1230. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. I am Michaela Bram. Tune in tomorrow for the latest news from the Charlton State Campus in Stephenville, Texas.